So I'm more making this review as a sort of joke, uh, a little inside joke, I guess. So in my private horror group, Sinister Cinema, on Facebook, I have a friend there, and she hates this fucking movie so much, and I've heard her talk about it and her hatred for it so many times. And I saw this in theaters, and I remember thinking it was fine, and just her overwhelming hatred for it over the uh, however long it's been now, that many times I've seen her talk about it. I, I've always been like, you know, I'm going to go back, I'm going to rewatch that, I'm going to review it just for her. So kind of a, kind of a joke here because uh, I usually review movies for people that have requested them um, or really like them. I'm, I'm, rec I'm reviewing a movie for somebody who did not ask me to do this and hates the movie. But, uh, yeah, I just had to go back and rewatch it. It was for her, so here you go. Now, what's funny is uh, her name on Facebook is Injury, and uh, it's been so long since she's been going by that name, and I knew her under her real name for a while when we first met uh, online, and now I'm having a hard time even remembering what her real actual name was. <laughs> That's how long it's been since she changed over to that name. Anyways, Unfriended Dark Web. So uh, I picked this up at like Zia Records pretty cheap. I, I think I got it for like six or seven bucks or something. I think if I remember correctly, I had posted that I got it there. And she said that, you know, I overpaid. Or if I paid more than one cent, I overpaid or something like that. Uh, or maybe I just made that whole thing up. I, I don't remember. But regardless, okay. Uh, does this happen in the movie? Does that happen in the movie? Uh, I don't think it does. I don't think it does. The kills in this movie are lame. I will say that. Now, they are scary, but they're scary in their setup, and they're scary in our minds. Like, when I think of what's happening to them in those situations and the fear that would already be there because they know what's going on and all this. That's scary. But the execution, the way that we see it on the screen, is kind of lame. It just is. And the first Unfriended movie, which I've reviewed here on the channel, I just think is one of the most underappreciated horror films of the damn decade, probably. I think it's fantastic. I think it is so well-paced. I think it is so eerie. I think it is so creative and clever and just fucking fantastic filmmaking. To do something on a laptop and to make it that engaging, that, you know, engrossing was phenomenal to me because went into that movie expecting nothing, was expecting it to be just very middle grade garbage. And no, I mean, phenomenal. I, I, I would give it like a near perfect score, you know, just out of control how, how much I love the first one. So when they announced they were making a sequel, of course, I was like, all right, I'm fucking there. Um, and I went in and I, and they took away the supernatural element and they just made it a completely new group of people and a completely different scenario and all that, which I'm fine with. I don't have an issue with that idea. I don't have an issue with them changing it. What do I really want it to be? Uh, Laura Barnes, wasn't that the girl's name in the first movie? Or I want her coming back for a second movie? Absolutely not. That's just silly to me. The movie opens with video distortion on the like studio productions and all of that. I fucking hate video distortion in found footage films. So to open the film like that instantly irritated me because I was like, that's not what I want. Now, granted, in the film that does kind of play a role and it's not just shaky cam and it's not just, it's trying to hide things to uh, get out of having to actually show it you know, a reason why they use it a lot in found footage movies is, is because of that. Because they don't have the budget, because of whatever. So they're like, oh, we'll get clever and we'll make it video distortion. And that's why you can't see what's going on. It's a cheap bullshit tactic. And I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But within this film, the people who are the Sharons, Sharon, however the hell you say that, they are distorted when they come within the vicinity of a camera or electronic device. Like they are wearing something or something. They have something or they have the ability to hack the computers to whatever happens. 
they're unable to be seen and the distortion comes around them when they're there. Um, so I like that okay, so I'm kind of okay with it. Um, in the beginning, the password he figures out because the password's sitting right there on the computer. It's a question mark and this and that. And at first I was like, come on, what the fuck? If you had such private files on there, if you had this and that, what the hell? Why would you leave it like that? But of course, at the end, the big reveal is is that this was a setup all along, that the laptop was supposed to be found, which of course makes perfect sense. Why would that guy, if his life depended on it, uh, see leave his freaking laptop at a cyber cafe for weeks unclaimed? You know what I mean? So all of that is silly. Um, but it makes sense because, you know, we find out that it was a setup, that they did want him to do this. That they now they are banking. Maybe this is like the fifth time they did it. Who knows? I mean, maybe you know, four other people didn't fall for it. They took it and then they brought it right back, or they got rid of it, or whatever. And this was the guy that finally fell for all the stuff and played into the game exactly the way they wanted them to. You know, having the friends. Yes, it was all very convenient. All super convenient that he would open up a bank transfer and then he would find all these things that are hidden in the computer and all. Like how the fuck. Do they think that a random person, if I found the computer, if I found the laptop, I wouldn't take it because I'm not an asshole who would steal things like that. But whatever, you know, even if I did for some reason have the computer, I wouldn't be able to find it out any of that shit. I'm not a fucking hacker. I'm not a fucking computer guy. And nor is a lot of people I know. Almost anybody I know. You know, there are a few people I know who are really good with with computers and such. But this guy, like, has an instant answer. His buddy that he's talking to, he's like, hey, uh, this and that. And the guy types so fucking fast. I love how the how fast computers work in these movies. Now, granted, you don't want any lag time. The realism can take a back seat because, of course, we want the film to move. It's a pacing thing. We don't need loading screens and this and that, like in real computers. But it is funny when I'm watching it and I'm like, God, I wish my computer worked that fast. I wish, and I don't care if you have a Mac, I don't care what you have, nothing works as fast as it does in this movie. It's out, outrageous The fast, as fast as they download things, as fast as they pull things up, new website, new this. The connection they have must be like 6 trillion gigabytes per uh, millisecond because they are just, it. and then they have like hard drives or uh, RAM. They have like fucking a terabyte of RAM <laughs> and their shit moves so fast it's crazy but it's cool anyway oh all the hot chicks that are riding him below he just thinks this guy's a player and that girl sends a video of herself to him she's like doing like a selfie video and she is a drop dead gorgeous I mean that girl's phenomenal that's the kind of girl you meet at the altar and just say I do I don't care otherwise just I need that in my life forever Okay, only if you're a superficial, surface-level bitch like me, you would do something like that. But uh, there you go. Uh, man, all the girls. I mean, pretty much every girl in this movie is fucking beautiful. Um, that girl in the video with the selfie film, <laughs> ooh, she's, she's fantastic. But uh, she's very traditionally hot. I, I don't think anyone could argue that she's not attractive for any reason. But Amaya... The, the deaf girl in the movie. Oh my good lord, is she just stunning. This is a beautiful woman. Uh, yeah, sign me up. I don't care if she's deaf, dumb, and full of... Never mind. Um, and then also the blonde chick. I, don't, I never caught her. I, I caught her name, but I can't remember what it is. The gay couple. See, here's what I'm thinking. So... Earlier, maybe yesterday or today, uh, Injury, or what is her fucking real name? I know I know it. Um, she's a weirdo, man. She's such a weird girl. Uh, she, she would be very um, flattered by, for the, by that description. She is a fucking bizarre chick, though. Um, but she recently was talking about agendas and... Stop putting fucking this and that into movies and this, you know, and, and one of them, one of those things is like a gay couple. Oh, there's a gay couple in the movie, this and that. We kind of got into a little bit of a um, discussion about that. That's the nice way to say it. We didn't fight, but we definitely, um, you know, debated it. And I'm completely not on her side on this. I 
I don't think, and and, and she kind of, she made her point okay, and I, I get what she's saying, that a film that is clearly pushing an agenda is annoying to her, but I do think where I come in as a little different is I feel like, I feel like everything these days, if there's a gay character, or if there's a, you know, a black character that's dealing with, uh, you know, uh, racism or whatever, people immediately take it like it's racism or racism. <laughs> I already said that. Uh, fucking an agenda, and it's like, oh come on, <laughs> come on, we can't put it. You can't put a gay person in a movie anymore without being agenda. Like the gay character just can't exist anymore. Otherwise, it's Hollywood liberal elites trying to have some kind of a le- agenda against. Like, come on. Come on. There I granted, I will say, every once in a while I watch a movie where I'm like, okay, this is an agenda. Like the Black Christmas remake, that shit is a man hating fucking agenda. I don't care what you say. <laughs> that film is outrageous. So if in if that was the case, if that was how it was being uh portrayed. Like, if films were pushing the agenda that hard. Yeah, I would be like, all right, it's ridiculous. But I almost have to wonder, because there's a gay couple in this, I, I, I'm i probably way off base here, and she's rolling her eye. Her eye. <laughs> wink, wink to her. She knows what I mean. She's probably rolling her eyes at me. Um, that, that I'm way off. But I don't know. I saw the gay couple in here, and we were just having this discussion, and I'm like, does she think this is, like, woke? freaking uh, agenda here like they're just gay characters i mean seriously if that bothers you in any way it, i'm not saying like she has anything against homosexuality that never seen any evidence of that that's not what i'm saying at all um but yeah i mean if you have an if you have a problem with gay a gay couple being in a movie just because you think it's part of an agenda that's fucking silly that's just fucking silly so when i saw the gay couple i was like do you think this is, like, an agenda? Because if so, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. So, as I said, maybe I'm way off base. Uh, this video is mostly for her. Uh, but uh, hopefully you get some entertainment out of it as well. Um, yeah, it just, I keep I keep thinking about the whole, like, the convenience of a guy like this with friends like that. And him being able to break into all of these things, him doing all the things that they wanted him to do. I don't feel like anyone pushed him towards these things. You know? Like the bank account that he had to figure out by himself, the you know, the people he's talking to, finding the videos and the way that he does, all that stuff is so unbelievably convenient. Like why not just leave the videos on the laptop? You know? I, I don't know, but if you wanted them to find it, if you want, like, have a bank account on there and, and have it, it's it's a movie. It's supposed to be convenient, but it was just like, wow, that was really, really fucking convenient. Um, and then shit just kind of gets real, real quick. Like, once the guy comes in and he, he, he breaks into Amaya's house and he kill, kills her friend... I'm assuming he does actually kill her because he said, oh, I just knocked her out, you know. This and I can only assume he actually killed her. Um, maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't. I don't know. Uh, maybe because of the setup and the way they would want that to go, maybe they would want to leave her alive. I don't know. Hmm. Curious. Be curious on if she's actually alive, but it doesn't really matter. But yeah, he comes into his house. He does something to that chick. And then the insurance, the whole, the insurance thing. Now, they were fucked from get-go. That, that's just evident here at the end. But before we realize that this is a setup from the beginning, the choice to make the insurance of taking the money, the $10 million, transferring it over to his bank account, all that stuff, was his demise. Like, that was a poor decision. I get the decision, he wants to protect her. He's in love with her. He's a stalker almost. I mean, his obsession with this chick is borderline, you know, um, questionable. It almost reminds me of like Better Off Dead with Beth. How, obs- how obsessed Lane is with Beth. Uh, that's, that's funny shit. But 
Then I saw the video of them together. He plays the video of them like out hiking or whatever. And she's like, I love you. And she's unbelievably outrageously radiant and dazzling and just uh, stunning. Um, and I see them laying together and hugging and kissing. And I see, and I'm like, wow, yeah, no, I get it. But, I mean, this guy wants to be with her so bad. And she needed him to understand her. So she kind of extended that olive branch and was like, look, like, if you want to be with me, this is kind of going to be the requirement. Like, I need you to sign. I need you to take classes. Uh, that's how I communicate. Like, I don't feel like I'm ever going to fully connect with you. And if I met Amaya, are you fucking kidding me? If that girl came into my life as gorgeous as she is, as cool as she seems and all of that, and as crazy as he is about her and as crazy as she seems to be about him within this, fuck, I'll learn sign language, I'll use fucking Portuguese, I'll learn fucking pig Latin or fucking whatever you want. Holy shit. Yeah. So, but I get it. I mean, I, his explanation of like, you got scared. I mean, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. Like, you got scared of what? Him just saying, like, he talked to the he talked to the teacher in the class, and he was like, you know, this doesn't normally work out. Like, what? I don't find that. Like, I think that's horseshit, though. Like, deaf people date other deaf people, not to my knowledge. I mean, anyone who I know who's physically impaired like that dates you know people without those same disabilities I mean I, I've never known but maybe they do maybe they do get together I, I don't know but I, I for him I would have been like okay whatever I'm here to fucking learn sign language so that we can better our relationship and stay together so how about you teach me the fucking language instead of trying to get in my head. He probably, you know what? The teacher just wanted Maya. That's what it is. Look at her fucking, this guy is just like, oh, things won't work out, man. And he already knew how to sign because he's like, all right, I'll get rid of this guy. And then she wants a guy who can sign. And then I'll come up and be like, oh, you're deaf. Oh, it just so happens. And I'm like, fuck you. Can you read that, buddy? All right. I had this whole branch off of my own version of events. I, I had like a little, I had little, like a little spin-off movie going off in my head. This uh, this sign language teacher who's stealing dudes' chicks because uh, he he scares them out of dating, and then swoops in and does some fucking origami with his fingers. Um, oh, he probably if you can if you're really good at signing with your fingers. I mean, <laughs> what could he be doing to Amaya? He could be you could give. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking place I was about to go right there. He could sign inside of her and see if she could still read it. That's amazing. That is amazing. It's absolutely fucking ridiculous and doesn't even make any sense unless she could fit an entire hand up inside of herself. And then that would be talent. It'd be like braille inside around the nips. All right. What am I talking about? Do you see what happens when I record reviews at 143 at night? Injury just for you, babe. Just for you, you get the crazy. This is better than the movie for you. That I guarantee. That I guarantee. With as much as you hate that movie. With this movie. Making this chick... Uh, the AJ scene where he gets blasted by the cops. Yet another series of events that would have to be insanely convenient for it to all work. But, you know, it was kind of cool the way it played out. Um, and then uh, the blonde chick, super super fucking hot blonde chick there has to choose between her mom and her um, her fiance I actually really like the characters in this movie I, I do think that they develop them fairly well I mean not wonderfully of course um, but pretty well I, I like them all for the most part so so I was I, I, I did buy into that stuff um, but the blonde chick has to decide between the two she can't make the decision and yeah there could be uh i'm sure there were plenty of people in the theater or at home that were watching this and were like stupid bitch like you you should have just picked your mom she's dying anyway and that was such a simple decision and this and that and it's like i get where you're coming from but at the same time i mean seriously 
having X amount of time, a minute or something, to decide between two people you love dearly like that, like, really? I mean, I think she thinks she, her mom's going to make a recovery, right? I mean, if they said it's cancer, right? But she's saying, so yeah, I mean, if she was on her deathbed, I do feel like that's a quote unquote easy pick. I'm not trying to downplay how hard that pick would still be. But if the mom was like up and about and alive and well and they had this amazing relationship, I feel like that scene would have played out better because it would have been like, but killing your mom who's sitting there in a hospital bed. I just, I think the, I th now I have a bias because I don't care for my mother, but. I don't know. Making her sick to me just seemed like it was an easier decision. But that all being said, put all that aside. A person having to pick between that, there are people like her that would be like, no, fuck you, I'm not picking. I actually think that would be more common than you would think it would be. I think there would be a lot of people who would do something like that. And in the end, yeah, it costs them both their lives. Now, granted, I do think that they probably would have killed them anyway. And if they didn't, I think they would have killed her girlfriend anyway, or fiance. And maybe the mom would have been able to stay alive because they were like, what's this chicken to tell? Like, she's not going to know any better. So um, I do think they were going to push her in front of the train or kill her later on anyways. All these guys were going down. So, um, But her not have, being able to pick, I, I feel like people might be a little too hard on her for that. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I can see it because I was thinking it in my head. And then I had to kind of back myself out like, really? Like, what if someone put up both your kids? Now, this isn't a both your kids scenario. As I said, one's on her fucking deathbed as it looks. But if you put, like, my father on his deathbed and then somebody else, I, I would pick my father, I do think, just because it makes the most sense logically. I'm a pretty logical person. But that's not to say there's plenty of people who wouldn't be able to not pick and get them both killed. Um, because you don't want to live with that guilt. You know, you don't want to, like, I, I, I get where they're coming from, but um, we figure out they're all around the world that this corporate, this uh, whatever the hell you want to call these guys, this group, this gang, this band of deviants, uh, mischievous characters, they are all around the world, all around the globe, and they can get at you anywhere you're at, and they can hack your shit, and they can make it look like this, and... They need someone to take the fall for their game because they need uh, scapegoats. And so they set these guys up and then the, the dude out in England or whatever is has like a suicide note being written there supposedly through his hand as he's being hung in the background, um, much to his chagrin. <laughs> um, and then Erica is put in... Um, Matthias's house and made to look like he was the one who kidnapped her and drilled a hole into her head. So I guess that guy did get his video after all. That poor, cute little freaking girl, man, got mutilated like that. And uh, I, I do feel like something should have crawled out of her head. It was like put something inside, like a living being, like put a freaking mouse in there or something. I don't know. It would have been interesting to see like a roach or something crawl out. Um, but then we get into the ending, and the ending is uh, in in the movie, in the original, in the the I guess what you would consider the mm, real version. I, I don't know what to say about this, but this is the ending they picked for the film. When you just press play for the film, it has the ending where they both die. Matthias and Amaya both die. Then, in the alternate endings, there's three alternate endings. There's one where Amaya and Matthias live. There's one where only Amaya lives. And there's one where Matthias lives. I watched them all. Um, you can fast forward a lot of them because a lot, a lot of it is all the same leading up to. But uh, the one where Matthias lives, that's questionable. It's very much left open-ended. Did he kill himself? Did he not? Uh, the one where Amaya lives, it seems pretty clear-cut that she is going to live. And the one where Amaya and uh, Matthias live, it does seem like they're going to live. That all being... And now, they actually voted on whether or not they live 
in the uh, Amaya and, and uh, Matthias won, and everyone voted for yes because of his love and dedication to her and all of that. So it's kind of a sweet ending, which I think maybe would have pissed uh, Injury off even more <laughs> from my, and you know, from knowing her. She likes really dark shit. And maybe because it's called Dark Web and has those, maybe she was just disappointed in the fact that this movie doesn't go way, way darker. It could have, absolutely. I mean, they could have went really fucking dark with this film, and they just didn't. Um, so I understand that, and I understand the complaints. I don't think it's shitty. I think it's a, I think it's good. I think it's a, I think it's a decent follow-up to a great film. Um, it lacks in some areas, but has other strong suits. Um, overall, for me, it's just a good one. Um, but yeah, I do find it funny that the real ending is both of them dying. And then all the alternate endings is variations of one of, or if not both of them, living. So in the real version, they're destined to die. Um, but yeah, I mean, of course, the romantic in me wants... Uh, them both to live but at the same time like what's Matthias's life going to be like he's going to get arrested for the kidnapping of that girl um, and all of his friends have left like manifestos and gotten shot to death and okay that chick the Asian chick the, the, the one that's up on the building and gets pushed up why the fuck was she up there I'm guessing they talked her onto the ledge right they were like you need to go up here we're going to shoot you and then the guy just came and pushed her off I guess that's what happened, but in the moment, it was like, why the fuck was she just standing there? That was kind of odd. But anyway, um, yeah, I don't hate it. I uh, had some fun talking about it. Injury, I don't give a shit how weird you are. I don't care how many eyes you have. I don't care what your fucking actual name is. I don't give a fuck how much you watch, like, super dark uh, content like guinea pig movies and freaking all that shit like it's pornography I don't care about any of that I think you're rad I always enjoy talking to you um, so there you go I hope you enjoyed it adios sweetheart <laughs>